macOS Sonoma has more than 100 new features and changes, but it also includes several new settings that you probably did not even know about. So in this video, I'm going to show you 17 settings that you need to change immediately after installing macOS Sonoma on your machine. Number one seems obvious, but you want to go into your system settings and then go down to wallpaper and you want to change your wallpaper to one of the hundreds of new motion wallpapers so you can get the really cool animation when you lock your device you can see how it moves real slowly and then when I unlock it it comes to a slow halt it's very smooth so you definitely want to have that set up right away and if you want to spice things up you can also shuffle wallpapers so that you get a new one every single day every 12 hours or even continuously so you can go up here and change the setting for how often you shuffle through these aerial wallpapers however I will say that even though these wallpapers are really cool these videos are really cool they do take up a lot of space and if you want to see those files and how much space they're taking up you can do that so if you go into the finder right here and then go to go and then go to folder and you want to go to this path right here library application support and then you'll see idle assets sd so go into there and then go to customer and then right here you will see 4k sdr 240 fps so if you press spacebar on that you can see how much space these wallpapers are taking up so mine take up 10.19 gigabytes and I only have 16 of them downloaded. So if you go into here, you could actually see the full MOV file for all of these wallpapers. And this is a cool way to download them and offload them somewhere else if you want to or have them on another device. But it's also a good place where you can just delete them off of your machine. The next thing you need to do after installing macOS Sonoma is add widgets to the desktop. No matter how much you think you're not gonna use them, I pretty much can guarantee that you're gonna find some use from widgets on the desktop, especially because you can also easily hide them if you want to with a simple click. Watch this, click, and now everything is gone. Here's how I set that up. Just go into your system settings, go to desktop and dock, and then go down here under widgets, and now you can have it set to show widgets on the desktop or not. And of course, you can have them only show in Stage Manager as well if you want to, or you could just turn Stage Manager as a whole off. Now, you'll also wanna change the widget style. So you'll see right here, we have that monochrome effect. You can change that in the settings to full color, or you can have it be automatic so that when you are on the desktop, they are in full color, but when you're in another window they turn to that grayscale that monochrome and you could also enable or disable use iPhone widgets so in macOS Sonoma you can use continuity to use iPhone widgets and have those on your desktop but if you don't want that you could turn that off and if you want to choose a different phone or a different device you could choose which device your Mac gets the widgets from and then last thing about widgets you can easily change the size by two finger pressing or right clicking on it and then choosing the different size you have right here you don't need to delete and create a new one you could just change it on the fly like so now if you're not a fan of the whole click to view desktop thing like if I click on the desktop right here it takes away the windows if you're not a fan of that which I can see why you would not be you can change that so all you need to do is go into your settings and then go down here to desktop and dock and then under desktop and stage manager we have the option for click wallpaper to reveal desktop now you can turn that off by turning it to only in stage manager so now when I click on the desktop you can see nothing goes away it stays and I'm able to interact with the desktop without moving this window away and by the way if you want to reference these Mac OS settings later on down the road or if you just like written content I do have a PDF version of this video that's also available for channel members so if you want to join the club and grab that PDF along with some sweet wallpapers and more you can do that by clicking on the link down in the description below the next thing you need to do is set up your web applications I know this sounds so boring but it's something that's so useful especially for things like Google Docs for example so if you go into file while you're on the Google Docs website and then go down to add to doc this is a new feature in Mac OS Sonoma so when you click on that you will now add this Google Docs as an application so you can name it whatever you want you could also change the URL right here if you want it to go somewhere else and you can change the icon that you see down in the doc right here this is just the default favicon but you can change it if you would like to and then click on add and you will see it now down here 
here in the dock and when you click to open it up it opens up in its own application notice how it's not in safari or it's not in you know chrome or anything like that it's google docs it even shows it up here and if you want to change the url for one of your web applications without creating a new one you can do that as well so just open it and then go up top and then go to settings and from here you can change the application url and you could also change some of the appearance here as well so if you want to show color and the title bar you can do that along with navigation controls you can turn those on or off that's just what you see up here on the top left the next thing you need to do is know about game mode and potentially turn it off if you don't like it so you can see when you open up an application and put it in full screen mode you get a new option up top that says game mode on and what this does is it prioritizes the performance of the game when you're in full screen so if you want to turn this off you can simply just go out of the full screen so if we go right here and click on the green icon you will notice that it is now off so if we go to the game controller icon up in the status bar it shows where we can turn game mode off and if you press on that it will turn it off and you can turn it back on like so but it will only work when you're in full screen mode but that is how you can turn game mode off if you don't like it and then speaking of gaming if you use a mouse you can now disable pointer acceleration so you can do this by going into your settings and then down to mouse and then to advanced and from there you will see pointer acceleration where you can turn this off and this is really good for gaming because you don't have any restriction on your cursor speed so you could do this with a terminal code in the past but that's no longer needed because it's now a built-in feature next up if you have airpods you need to enable auto switching again because I don't know about you guys but auto switching from an iPhone to a Mac or really any other device to a Mac has been terrible but now with Mac OS Sonoma it's finally good so if you go into your Bluetooth settings and go to your AirPods I have my AirPods Pro 2 right here make sure connect to this Mac is set to automatically because mine for a long time was set to when last connected to this Mac just because I wanted to avoid my AirPods automatically trying to connect to my Mac and it was always finicky but now it's good again Again, so I'm going to have this set to automatically the next setting you need to change is predictive text so I don't know what it is but I don't mind the inline predictive text on iOS and iPad OS but on Mac OS I just don't like it I type too fast for these inline predictions to try to predict what I'm going to say it messes me up more than it helps me so to turn this off go into your system settings and then down here under text input we have input sources click on edit and from here you will see show inline predictive text you want to turn that off if you're like me and you're not a fan of the predictive text on Mac OS the next setting you need to change has to do with Safari profiles so Safari profiles one of the biggest new features in Mac OS Sonoma but there's more to it than meets the eye so if you go into your settings here and then go to profiles first off if you have not created a new profile you might think that there's not really much to it because all you can do is create a color and choose a symbol but there's a lot more to it so click on this plus right here and add yourself a new profile so once you have one you will see we have some additional settings here to change so you can change the favorites so that's what you see right here underneath of the address bar you can change which favorites show up right there you can choose what new windows open with so you can have it to a start page an empty page the same page or all of your tabs that you have for that specific section or that specific bookmark so you can see I have a bookmark folder right there so it's going to open all those as you see right here and then you can also change what new tabs open with and then next to that we have extensions and from here you can select which extensions you want to use with that specific profile also while we're in here I may as well point out a few other settings you might want to change so if you go into the privacy section you can turn on or off requiring touch ID to view a locked tab in private browsing so if I go to open a new private window you will notice that it is locked and then when you go to file new window you can open up a window in a specific profile with keyboard shortcuts so you can see the keyboard shortcut right there and if you want to change what those shortcuts are you can just go into your settings and to keyboard and then to keyboard shortcuts and then from here you can go down to app shortcuts and then select an application so we'll just select Safari and I'll do command option shift period since that's probably not taken by anything else and we'll click on done and then heading over to advanced you might want to change this setting right here so it says use advanced tracking and fingerprinting protection 
in private browsing or in all browsing. So you can now turn off your digital fingerprints in all browsing and not just when you're in a private window. And when it says fingerprinting protection, it's just talking about your digital fingerprint online where websites and companies track your browsing habits and they are able to combine it with other data like your software, your hardware, your extensions, all of that. That's what creates a digital fingerprint. So you can enable or disable that in all browsing. Oh, and then also in the Safari settings, you can go to passwords right here. And if you put in your passcode, we also have under password options, the ability to clean up our verification codes on Mac OS as well. So you probably already enabled this on iOS or iPad OS 17, but you may have forgot to do it on Mac OS. I would recommend doing that. That way your two factor authentication codes will auto delete after you insert them with autofill. And again, this applies to both messages and for mail. Another setting you might want to change is right here under share passwords with family. So from here, you can share your passwords and your pass keys with family members. So this can be extremely handy if you have a lot of family members with you know shared logins or anything like that. If you go to get started, this allows you to set up a new shared group. And from here, you can add people. So this allows you to add contacts by their name, email, or phone number. So once you add somebody in there, you can go to create and now it's going to create that group. And it says you will need to update devices to access the shared password. So everybody needs to be on the latest version and then go to continue. And from here, you can move certain passwords into that group that you just created. So if I just select, you know, this one right here, if I move that into the group, now it shows and we can manage it from here. We can, you know, tap on this plus to add a new passcode or move a password to a group. Or if we want to add people, we can do that right there. And if we click on the I next to that, you can see all of the details about that specific password. The next thing you want to change in Mac OS Sonoma is how dramatic your video effects are when you're on a video call. So whether you're using your built in camera, or if you're using continuity camera, you can change these settings by going up to the purple icon and the status bar, and you can adjust the portrait mode. So you can make it really intense or not very intense. You can see the background blur changing. And if you go to studio light, you can decrease or increase the effect of that studio light effect. You also have reactions here where you can manually enable these reactions. They can also do that by giving a thumbs up and it will pop up automatically. But you can have like a rain effect. You can have a party effect. You can have all these right here. You can change your mic mode from here as well. And if I were to connect my iPhone via continuity camera, so we're going to connect my 14 pro, you can see that under center stage, we can now choose whether we want to use the main camera or the ultra wide camera. So you can actually change the lens just from the status bar on your Mac, which is pretty awesome. And then speaking of video calls, you also want to change a setting when you're in a zoom call or a Google meet call, for example. So you can see I'm in here right now. And if I want to share my screen, so we're just going to go to share screen and we'll just share my desktop, for example. If you go up into the status bar once again to the purple icon, you will see that we have presenter overlay. This is off by default, but you need to change this and turn this on. So whether that's small, that way you show up in a little picture in picture down in the bottom left hand corner, or large, where you are, you know, you have your full screen right here and you kind of have like a green screened version of your desktop or whatever window you have saved right here. And you can point to things really easily. It's almost like a little whiteboard right there. So that is really cool. Definitely something to change presenter overlay when you're in a video call. The next thing you want to change is Hey S. So if you go into your settings into Siri and Spotlight, right up top, we have a listen for option. And from here, you can choose between just saying S or Hey S, or you can just turn this off completely. So this is a setting you want to change based on your experience. I personally like just saying Siri and that's it. I've found that there's not very many false triggers. So it works for me, especially on the Mac. And then the final setting you need to change in Mac OS Sonoma is inside of the settings and then down to keyboard and then dictation. If you had this turned off before, you need to turn it on because it's gotten much better with Mac OS Sonoma. So let me show you what I mean. If I press on dictation, I can start saying what I'm going to say. And if I start typing in the middle of that, you'll notice how it doesn't register what I'm saying because I'm typing. Now, if I stop typing and I start talking again, it picks back up where I left off. 
So this is awesome. And you can press on the microphone button again to end the dictation just like so. And also in settings, you can change what the shortcut is for dictation. So if you want to change it to something else, you could do that right here, or you can customize it to a specific key. Also down here, you can turn off auto punctuation. So if you don't want the periods and the commas going in there, if you'd like to say that manually, you can do that there as well. So there you have it. Those are the first settings that you need to change in Mac OS Sonoma. Now, if you want to see more than 100 new features and changes, in the updates. I did make a very extensive video on that as well. That is linked up in the cards in the top right and also down in the description below. And if you want to get access to a PDF version of this video, along with other perks, you could check out that in the link down in the description below as well. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS videos in the very near future. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.